Okay, right here you can see a timing mark. That's for top dead center. So I'm gonna roll my engines so that I'm on top dead center, which should basically be somewhere right there. We may have to move it once we put the cam in. Okay, I'm gonna put my camshaft in. I inspected my bearings and they all look okay. Um, I threw a little oil in them. Um, I'm gonna look at all the lobes. You can see this spot right here, that's bad. This camshaft is junk. So there's really no use measuring it. Um, it's good enough for a, a teardown engine, but if you see any hard facing missing like that, it is junk. I've got it rigged up on the crane and the engine inverted. So when you put these in, you gotta be really careful and work it in because you don't want to ding up your bearings. These bearings are really in bad shape. I get it started in the bore. You can do this from the front with a, um, if you had a cam installation tool. Um, I'll tell you right now, this is a lot harder, to, or that's a lot harder. So there, I got to kind of work it to get it lined up with the, so, see I hit that bearing bore in the second um, the cam bearing bore. I'm looking at all these lobes as I go in. Um, and I'm not seeing too bad ones. Well, right there, that one's pretty bad too. So, like I say, this this would be due for a camshaft. This engine would. You have to just be patient with this when you do this, because it hangs up on the lobes as you go in. See there, it hung up on me, so I gotta turn it and get it to line up. Looks like it's going now. Keep your fingers out of the way. These camshafts are sharp. They will pinch you. There, see I turned that and got that to go. Okay. Anytime you got to put a camshaft in from an end like this, this is ideal if you can. Um, and quite honestly, most of the time you get to do a camshaft, you're probably out of the chassis anyways. Uh -oh. We're not going in very good right now. There it goes. I'm going to pass it. So you just keep turning it, lining it up. I guarantee you're going to do a lot less damage to the cam bearings this way than you would if you did it the other way. What I did, I just used a chain and some thick washers. If you got some thick fender washers, um, those work really good. Or some cat eyes, you know, there's different ways of doing this. And I'll see the cam and the crank don't line up yet, so we'll have to time that accordingly after we get this in here. Now I'm in and I'm started. I'm going to actually leave it up just a little bit and I'll put something underneath it so that I can get my nuts out of there. If you can see what I did, I just put some thick washers and a bolt through a chain like that. Okay, this is the thrust bearing for the camshaft. Um, it can go in either way. Usually put the part number out. So it's going to slip in here. That manages your thrust bearing, keeps it from sliding in it too far. Okay, you can see the thrust bearing down here. That keeps the cam from sliding back and forth too far. Line those holes up there, put our bolts in it. Okay, there's one there and there's going to be one on the other side. That'll torque to the 45 foot-pounds again. 
Yeah, I got my torque wrench set already. Okay, I need to make sure I got end play on this. Which I do, I can feel it moving up and down. Okay, we're gonna put our timing gears on. Um, you can see there's a mark here and a mark here, one there, and then there's top dead center on the crankshaft. So basically, uh, I lube this bushing up, so that needs to spin freely. And they're a tapered gear, so you have to be right on the money pretty much to get it to go. Okay, I got it to go on. This line's marked up with this one. This line's marked up with this one. So the cam and crank timing are ready to go. I need to put the thrust plate on here. This side has a groove on it. That's because it's a thrust washer. Keeps it from coming off. So that's held on with four bolts. I said this is one of the more critical things you're going to check. Is to make sure that the cam and crank timing are correct okay there's a mark here and here and then you can also see a K here and a K here when it's on top dead center we'll also need to time our fuel injection pump um, but that's done after we get the flywheel cover on or the flywheel housing on and the flywheel so we can pin the flywheel on top dead number one um, but like I said this is critical this is lined up these are lined up and there's a K here and a K here um, torque or cam bolts. I also need to uh, put some lube behind this before I put it on. Um, I lubed the camshaft, made sure it turned well. Okay, we're going to put our idler gear on. Um, this gear comes from the cam gear up to the air compressor drive. The Right down here would be the fuel pump gear. Uh, and that's timed to the engine as well. It's not through marks though, it's done a little bit differently. This one, there's no real right or wrong way to put it on. But it's got a, this hub goes on first. Get that stuff off there. The leftover eliminator from putting the cover on. You slip in here like so, and then our gear is gonna go on top of that. Okay, make sure we've got backlash once we get everything tightened down. This plate goes on with the uh, concave face in. It's just an accessory drive gear basically is what that is. See how those gears line up, it didn't look quite right the way we were messing with it before, so this will be way better. This is kind of the pits, this housing back here you can't take off without taking this gear off and the whole front cover here because you can't get to the bolt. Okay, we're going to install our um, um, cam followers. So these are all marked where they came from. If you were doing a new camshaft, um, you would want to replace it. This little clip has to be in here. There's a little groove that that sits in. <coughs> We're going to go down here and put some oil in it. I'm going to lube up the roller. Like I said, it only goes in one way. You really can't screw this up. Well, I suppose you could if you really wanted to. Okay, we'll get them all started. And then we're going to have to push them in the rest of the way once I get these started. I'm going to go through and just do this quick. Make sure there's oil on the cam. That's one of the critical areas when you break an engine in. If the camshaft is not 
getting enough oil or lube, it will um, not last. So like I say, the first startup of an engine, the, one of the most important things you do is breaking in the camshaft. Kind of see the little locating clip, what that does is that keeps it centered so it doesn't turn in the bore. If it did that, that'd be bad, obviously. Um, these are roller camshafts versus automotive. A lot of those are not roller, they're slipper. Um, they're just basically a flat plug that slides on the camshaft. You can see there's a little bit of wear on that one. Um, if I was going to actually send this engine out, I would replace that. Um, if you change a camshaft, you have to change the lifters as a unit. They, uh, they develop wear patterns, and that's the main reason that you mark these when you take them out. Because uh, if you're going to reuse them, you want to put them on the same place. If we're going to put a new camshaft in, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's still a good habit to get into to mark stuff so that when you go back together and let's say you find a, an issue, you can go back to the part and figure out why it's... Okay, get these in there. Push them down and obviously some are going to be higher than others because it depends on what lobe we're on on the cam. This little clip that's in there that also helps retain it so it doesn't come out. Yeah, see that one won't go in because it's got an actual valve on it. So is that one. Or that would be pushing up on the push tube, which would actuate our uh, valve train.